Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bridgel, and in this corner of the internet, I make design and lifestyle related videos. So apart from fashion, I touch on subjects such as graphic design, illustration, as well as baking, traveling, blogging, etc. So if any of those topics interest you, consider subscribing and hit that bell for notifications. Now I'm really excited about these two art movements that I'm going to make these art inspired outfits from because these two art movements, Art Deco and Art Nouveau, those are my top two tiered favorite art movements of all time. So with the holidays coming up, I thought that these two art movements were perfect to make art inspired outfits from. Now I just wanted to let you guys know that these outfits that I'm going to show you in a minute, I actually think that you don't have to specifically have them for the holidays. These outfits you can pretty much wear all year round as long as you're going to, you know, the appropriate event for it. Um, because um, just looking at it, it doesn't specifically shout out holiday, hello, look, only wear it for December type thing. But, um, you know, they still fit within the holiday spectrum. It's just that I just wanted to let you know that, you know, you could add layers or take off layers depending on the certain time of year, whether it's, you know, very hot or very cold. These outfits still work even if you're not going to attend like a Christmas party or anything like that. So just putting that out there before we start, you know. All right. Let's get started because I can't wait for this. I'm already ready to jump in. Before we delve into the outfits, let's have a crash course on the two movements. If you already know about this or really want to get to the outfits, I've included a timestamp in the description below that'll take you to them. Art Nouveau aimed for modern design, seeking an escape from the more historical styles that were popular before this movement. They drew inspiration from both organic and geometric forms. They strived for elegant flowing designs to resemble the stems and blossoms of plants. Their movement was committed to terminating the traditional hierarchy of the arts, which was seeing things like paintings and sculpture more superior than decorative arts. They did this by elevating craftsmanship of their work and using higher quality materials. They wanted their work to look both elegant but functional. Like Art Nouveau, Art Deco is another movement that aimed for modern design to infuse functional objects with artistic touches. This movement is different from previous movements because Art Deco aimed to make aesthetically appealing practical and or machine-made objects that were to be available for everyone to use. Because of this, they were able to manifest in all areas of the visual arts from paintings to the graphic and decorative arts. The Art Deco style is known to be symmetrical, geometric, streamlined, often simple, and pleasing to the eye. At the time, this movement was seen as avant-garde because they challenged the audience to find meaning and beauty in untraditional images and forms. Now, just letting you know as the same as my last art-inspired outfits video, I apologize in advance if I butcher the titles of the works and the names of the artists. I really tried to pronounce them the best I could. This first outfit was inspired by the painting Self-Portrait in the Green Bugatti by Tamara de Lempieca. As the title goes, this is a self-portrait of the artist, which was commissioned by a German fashion magazine, Dia Dame, for the cover of one of their magazines in 1925. The painting on the cover of the magazine was to celebrate the independence of women. Alright, so to emulate the painting, um, I tried to find the most green dress that I had in my closet. Unfortunately, it was a dark green, but this was the closest one I have. This dress was a hand-me-down from my mom. She actually got it back in the 1990s, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, now the outside of this dress, I love the texture and feeling of it because it feels just like velvet, but I found out on the tag that it's actually made of rayon. Now at the bottom of this dress, um, it can flare out because it has that extra fabric just to add some more volume. So for shoes, I am wearing these black closed toe 2 inch block heels from H&M with an ankle strap because I cannot walk in heels for the life of me if it's not 2 inches and under. Is that just me? Do you guys have a hard time walking in heels? Because it is such a feat. So at the back of this dress, there is a cutout that can be clasped with a button at the top and it has a sweetheart neckline. Then on each side of the top part of the dress near the shoulder area, there are these sewn in faux diamond jewels. Then to move on to outerwear, so I have this um, snap-on clutch slash purse thing that I got gifted to me a few years ago and the brand is Nine West. There's a small mirror at the front just to check yourself if you need to throughout the day 
and there's enough space on the inside to hold your essentials and in the middle there is a coin purse now on the sides there is a detachable strap that you can clasp on the other side to turn it into a wristlet instead of a small purse. Then for the scarf, I threw on the white fuzzy scarf to match the headscarf in the painting. Then I threw on my cropped gray pea coat from H&M that was in my last art inspired outfits with no front pockets except for the chest area which I still think is weird. In the painting, the woman was wearing driver gloves. I unfortunately don't have the same color as hers, but I did pick up my most fancy gloves that I own that I got from a local boutique over here. It has some faux fur lining over at the wrist area. What I like about these gloves is that you can still wear them while still being able to mess around with your phone if you want, because priorities. Now for jewelry, I have these costume jeweled and teardrop pearled earrings as well as a faux pearl necklace that I actually got from Walmart. This next outfit is inspired by the poster The West End Review by Alfonse Maria Mucha. I unfortunately couldn't find any background behind the advertising poster, but Mucha was a painter, illustrator, and graphic artist known for his distinct, stylized, and decorative theatrical posters such as this one. His works are best known during the Art Nouveau period. Okay, so on the poster, the woman wore a floor length, or I guess even longer than a floor length, red dress. Now, I don't exactly have any floor length gowns, but this dress will have to do. So I have this red midi length dress on with a V neckline. And there are pleats on the front as well as the back, which I learned that the pleats are there to actually help give the silhouette a fuller look. And not only is it for an aesthetic purpose, but I actually learned there are practical benefits to it too because having pleats allows the person wearing the dress to move freely. Now for shoes, I am wearing these 2 inch block heels yet again, but this is in red and it's open toed with an ankle strap that I got from Target. Okay. So for the sleeves, I'm not actually sure what these sleeves are called. It was either a flutter sleeve or a flounce sleeve. So with these sleeves at the end, it has the scallop shaped and has these oval cutouts. And then within it, if you look closely, there are these little embellishment details in between each of the oval. So for outerwear, I have my white scarf to match the scroll of the poster. Then for my coat, I threw on my black pea coat from Burlington. Um, I tried getting it on, clearly it is a little difficult to put on while I'm holding a clutch, um, but I got it on after much trial. Here it is, a closer shot of it. It has a belt in the waist area. This is a closer shot of the white fuzzy scarf since you didn't get to see that in the last outfit. So now for my purse, I have this black clutch and it actually has, wait for it, Voila! Look, it has a little chain that you can hide or use to, you know, just throw it over your shoulder so you don't have to hold it all the time. And it just has a snap-on clasp. This clutch is really interesting um, because when you look closer at it, it kind of has like this scale um, pattern on it. Now for accessories, for my hair, I just used this gold-colored hair clip. Then I have these emerald teardrop shaped earrings that I found at an antique store. I have this simple statement necklace I got at Charming Charlie's. Then to top it off, I got this costume bracelet gifted to me. My last outfit was inspired by the Art Deco American Radiator Building, which was later renamed to the American Standard Building. The two architects of this commission was Raymond Hood and John Howells. Since this was commissioned by a radiator company, the black brick on the frontage of the building was to symbolize coal and give the idea of solidity, and then the gold bricks was to symbolize fire. Now this skyscraper actually blends the gothic and art deco styles, but I wanted to focus solely on the art deco aspects. So to become the radiator building, I wore black head to toe with the main accent color being gold. 
I have this dress that I got from Forever 21. It has a scoop neckline and has tank top cut sleeve. Obviously that doesn't fit with the winter weather so as layering I put a black turtleneck on underneath that I got from Walmart and then I'm also wearing black tights. So with this dress there's a metallic gold skirt with lots of mini pleats and because it is metallic whenever the light hits it always shimmers and shines which mimics the gold accents of the building. For shoes I'm wearing these one inch not block heels this time but they are closed toed and black and no surprise but it has an ankle strap so it has support. I've had these shoes for over 10 years at this point so I honestly don't know where I got this from. I had to get it for like a choir concert back in the day. For my hair I just put it in a low ponytail which I put inside of a black velvet scrunchie. So for outerwear I'm wearing the same black pea coat that I wore in my last outfit and when I put it on the skirt of the dress still peeks out so you can still see a little bit of gold which I like. Then still keeping black as the dominant color of this outfit, I have my schmancy gloves that you saw in the first outfit of this video. Um, it's the black ones that have the faux fur lining over at the wrist area. For my purse, I have this metallic silver clutch that has a hidden chain on the inside of this purse. Then looking closer at this, the clasp resembles a metallic leaf and has a faux diamond jewel in the center of it. Now, before you see a closer look at my jewelry, I do want to say that I kind of forgot to film my bracelet that I was wearing in this outfit, but it's the same gold gifted one that I wore in my previous outfit. For jewelry, I have sunburst gold earrings from Amazon and then I have a gold statement necklace from Charming Charlie's. Now looking back on the outfits, as well as knowing a little bit of history on the crash course of Art Nouveau and Art Deco, I hope you can understand why those two art movements are the best. If you like this video, just let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, and just comment down below if there's any other art movement you'd like me to recreate into art-inspired outfits. Also, if you're interested and you really like my content, please support me on Ko-Fi by buying me a coffee. It's a one-time payment and helps me out with this channel as well as my other platforms so I can keep improving and consistently create creative content for all of you. The link will be in the description below and I will greatly appreciate all of your support. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so we can keep hanging out and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!